Is anyone out there? Well, if you are, it's time to make a purchase because the holidays are upon us and everyone knows that our collections make the best, unique gift at great pricing. For you horror fans, check out the all-new Horror 500 Gigabyte Collection and also the new 2 terabyte Sci-Fi and Horror Collection. You ask, where do I go to get these fantastic collections? <laughs> well, you go to oldtimeradiodvd.com, of course. And while you're there, sign up for Nostalgia USA Digital Magazine with over 15 hours of audio and video on every issue, all free. Where you ask? Well, oldtimeradiodvd.com, of course. Visit today. Order today. oldtimeradiodvd.com. Trust me, you'll be glad you did. The National Broadcasting Company presents The Adventures of Sam Spade, Detective. <laughs> Me, sweetheart. Sam, do you know you're in all the papers? Don't think I'm happy about it. You were standing on the sidewalk pointing, Mm -hmm. and there's a dotted line running from you to X where they found the body. You mean where they found the last body, F? There were several before it. I know. All those poor, poor people. Tell me, Effie, how many dots were there running from me to where they found the body? Oh, let's see. Um, one, two, three, six. Twelve, Sam. That's what I expected. What does it stand for? For one, two, three, six, twelve. Death, Seth. Oh, no, not really. But definitely. We just got in on a big finish. This is a tale of deceit and intrigue that's sprung through many islands and several countries. Yea, through a great many lives. So I am left with no choice but to call it the String of Death Caper. <laughs> For NBC, William Spear, radio's outstanding producer, director of mystery and crime drama, brings you the greatest private detective of them all in The Adventures of Sam Spade. Effie! Don't shout! How are you, Sam? Oh, I'm all right, I guess. Let me look at you. Sam, you need a rest. You've been staying up too many nights. And, and going around with the wrong people. You don't have to tell me. No. I have only this to say. If the people I've been going around with lately won't be going around anymore, so don't worry about me. All right, Sam, if you say so. Yeah. But you look so, so terrible. Yeah. Your eyes are bloodshot. Aren't everybody? And your hands are shaking. True, Effie, and here's why. Take it down. You ready? Well, don't make it... Don't make it too gory, Sam. Effie, I am not going to pull any punches. You'll have to take it as it came, the way I did. Oh. They fill it in. Through Lieutenant I.C. Kelsey, Homicide Detail, San Francisco Police, from Samuel Spade, License Number 137596. Subject, the String of Death Caper. Dear Kelsey, it's hard to believe that the events of the past 48 hours all began with the discovery of the oyster, but they did, and they made a marked change in the census figures of several countries. The whole thing was incredible. The most incredible part of it was that I was careless enough to let myself get mixed up in it. The entire Sini saga began two days ago when my door opened and a woman walked in. Showgirl, type 7B, light black skirt, two tight blouse, red alligator shoes, hair overdone in somebody's peroxide oven, you know, that kind of stuff. She chewed gum, of course, and swung a black patent leather handbag. And her charm bracelet was so loaded, I wondered if she could lift her arm. Let's face it, I'm stranded. Really? Where? Where'd you think? Here, right in this town. Well, my sympathies. Don't you sit down? Thanks. You're a gentleman. Not even so. The next time I take a job somewhere, I'm going to carry a ticket back to where I came from and a six-day supply of K-rations. Well, would you care to tell me about it? I was doing an act at the Gay Paris when the blow fell. Yeah. I had a big floor show trying to boost business, but it didn't boost, it busted. Oh. The place was padlocked. Likewise, the owner's pocketbook. <laughs> we were out two weeks' salary. We? I was the Alga, half of the dance team of Ricardo and Alga. And then? Ricardo, the creep, must have been tipped off, because the night we closed, at the end of his first number, he danced off the floor, out through the stage, and Pinson was never heard from again. Well, I always say we're better off without those kind of people around anyway. Not when he buffaloes out with all your savings. I hate him already. 
Well, I sent a wire to my booking agent for help, and his answer came back something like this. Hmm? Here, they're starving in the street. At least you got a hotel room to do it in. Pardon? <laughs> what a laugh. Oh, those agents are a shifty lot. They only like you when you're with. Ah, you're telling me. My rent's up at the end of the week, and after that, who knows? Well, now, madam, your story has touched me very deeply. Would it uh, spoil your timing any if I asked you why you came to see me? Say, you know, you got a trial there. <laughs> it's unique. It's widely copied. <laughs> now, don't flash too much of that repartee and make me forget what I came here for. Just unburden yourself, Olga. No more repartee. The name's Kelly. Kelly Green. Oh. You wouldn't be seen on the street as Olga. Pardon my mistake. Yeah. I came to ask you to find a guy named Captain Eric Nostrum. He's somewhere in San Francisco. An army man? <laughs> he bought that title in a saloon in Tahiti. Oh. A fish comer. Uh, Tom Kelly's got some information she wants to sell. Mm-hmm. You can reach me at the Embassy Hotel, 627. See you later, Sam. Uh, just a minute, Kelly. Yeah? I hate to mention this to someone in your position, but uh, there's a fee for my services. Oh, he'll pay you. The kind of information I got, he wants real bad. Well, ta ta. Clearing everything off my desk, two shoes with feet in them, mine, I embarked on this dangerous assignment, which Brian Donnelly will pardon the expression. You know, I am not without sources of waterfront information, and in a couple of hours I found myself in a bistro called the Backwash a place that hangs so precariously on the west bank of a bay that flies come to study it. Ah, hello, Sammy. How are you? Hello, Eddie. What's a good word? Well, Sammy, I know what I hear, but um, what I hear sometimes ain't the truth. Or am I too quick for you? Give me a for instance. Well, the guy you called about is sitting down at the far end of this very same bar. At least he calls himself Captain Eric Nostra, and this is what I hear from my side of the bar. But whether he is or not what he says he is, is only something that can be verified by investigation. Or am I too quick for you? All right, I have another pint of beer, Bartender. Yeah, let me buy it. Sir, you can buy me drinks all night. But don't make the mistake of trying to get me drunk. Uh, make it two, will you, Eddie? Hi, Sam. Sam, that means he knows you. You're okay by the house. Well, then you're okay by Captain Nostrum. There you are, two beers. Yeah. What's the rest of it, Sam? Spade. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you something about you, Sam Spade. You didn't come here to drink with me. You came to talk. Now, shall we go over in the booth? That's a good idea. Right. Yeah. Now I'm ready to listen. Do you know Kelly Green? Kelly? The dancer? Yeah. Why, every blasted sailor in the Orient knows Kelly. Uh, let me see now. The last time I remember her, she was dancing on a table in Singapore for some Dutch officer. Yeah, well, she's in town right now. She said she has some information we'd want to buy. I bet she has. You a friend of hers? Since this morning. Oh, that's long enough for me. Now, what are you? Private detective? I am, and that brings up one other point. She said, uh, you would pay me for finding it. Oh, surely. Uh, what's your fee? Uh, 25 of them. Yeah. You're 50. No, no, no. Oh, I'll I'd... take it now. As far as I'm concerned, you've earned it. <laughs> now then, what's our address? Embassy Hotel, room 627. Uh, well, I'll get in touch with him. Well, see you around. Hey, wait a minute, Spade. Hmm? Uh, how would you like to find someone for me? Why not? Who are you looking for? A man named Chan Lee. I suppose I'll tell you the old story now. You take a look at these. Look here. Feast your eyes. He took a swatch of velvet cloth out of a sea jacket pocket and opened it. On it were six very large, very breathtaking rose-colored pearls. Nostrum's eyes flipped over each pearl as if he knew it by name and lineage. He let me stare at them for several silent minutes before he spoke again. See such timeless beauty captured in six perfect spheres? I haven't seen many like those. Ah, and there aren't many. Twelve, to be exact. Twelve in all the world. Now, what are pearls like that worth? Well, any jeweler in this city would give you $5,000 a pearl for them. But if I had all twelve, I could sell the set for $75,000. i would you get the uh, half of the twelve pearls, nothing. You ever hear of the Tawitoi oyster banks off the Barneo Islands? No, I haven't been pearling lately. Ah, well, I have. Well, is that where these came from? That's right, from the Tawitoi banks. A friend of mine named Juro, named Hong Kong Ari, tipped me off that 12 perfectly matched rose-colored pearls could be picked up at Kagyan Sulo from a wholesale buyer called 
strong say Mao. Mm, well, which is it? I shipped over on a catch with two other men. Strong say Mao asked 12,000 pesos for the lot, and I took them. Mm-hmm. Again, when we left Cagayon Sulu, I got caught in a storm and I went overboard. But I didn't fall accidentally. No, I was it on the Eddie thrown overboard. Your buddies, one of the two. Ah, they got six of them in my sea bag. The other six were sewn inside my belt. I still have those. But I traced those two guys all over the Orient. But both of them were killed. Ah, the Morrow Curse, they say. So far, eight people have died over these pearls. The Morrow Curse? Yeah, yeah. Carney, isn't it? Yes, yeah. Anyway, the rumor is that the other six pearls have found their way to San Francisco and that a man named Chan Lee knows about them. Mm-hmm. Oh, I've been here 48 hours and I haven't found him. So what do you plan to do when you find him? <laughs> Don't you worry, Spade. I have a buyer. Right. I'll pay cash for him. All right, I'll give you 50 bucks worth of looking for Chan Lee. Now, where can I get in touch with him? Are uh, you in the book? Yeah. Then I'll find you. <laughs> but just one thing, Spade. If Kelly likes it, you must be straight. Here, take a pearl. Now, wait a minute, Master. You just said each one of these pearls is worth $5,000. Suddenly, 500 to me, but I want to play it this way. Now, if you find Chan Lee, you ask him if he knows me, and ask him if he knows about the pearls. Mm-hmm. Now, maybe he won't talk to you, so if he doesn't, just show him the pearl, and then walk out. He'll fall all over himself to find me. Well, you know best. I assume no responsibility for this pearl, right? Uh-huh. I can handle the responsibility for both of us. <laughs> yeah. Harry Ching, a friend of mine who has his ear to the Oriental ground, put down his mother tongue edition of that great Chinese detective, Sherlock Holmes, and directed me to a little food store just off Grand Street. There were a number of people in the store looking at merchandise. My man was small and fat and behind the counter. Good afternoon. May I assist you? San Lee? Oh, no. My name is Yuan. Well, Harry Ching told me Chan Lee would be here. Oh, before my name, you learned my name, Chan Lee. <laughs> the personal reason for change, you understand? Not fully, no, but I'm not here to inquire about that. Tell oh. me, do you know a man named Captain Eric Nuskin? Uh, no, 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 he a name, Captain Nuskin. With his big, red-pointed beard, rough. Register? Uh, sorry, no. <laughs> Ever hear of the rose-colored pearls of Palatown? <laughs> You joke. Why you talk fair with you young? I do your Chinese food, not beauty. Well, I might have the wrong Chan Lee, but uh, do you know anything about pearls? Oh, I can tell good pearl from bad pearl. My uncle wants pearl trader. Well, let me take a look at this. Oh, let me see. Oh, don't put it in your mouth. I just dip it to test skin. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Show me a joke with me. Joke about what? I know where five more are just like that, worth $5,000 a piece. <laughs> Somebody pull your leg. Mm. This poor Japanese culture pearl, artificial color, worth maybe $5. Really? <laughs> Next time, don't play joke on Chinese. Where are you in? Oh, yes. <laughs> Got me bored. <laughs> A skeptic I, I took the pearl to a jeweler I know, and he told me Sean Lee lied in his scraggly beard. It was the finest specimen of rose pearl he'd ever seen. Well, I went back to my office to wait for Nathan's call when and if it came. I say I went back to my office, but not directly in, because just as I was putting the key in my lock, something familiar pushed in between my shoulder blades. Mr. Spade, I know all the tricks, so don't try any. Just open the door and go in. You bet. Now sit down at your desk and put your hands on top of it. Hmm? Yeah, you were looking at the tea in Chan Lee's store, weren't you? I was, and I want the pearl you have. Me? You. <laughs> All right, if you're going to make a scene, suppose you give me something. I don't have to give you anything. That pearl belongs to me. It was stolen from me, along with all the others. By your agnostic. Right. Hmm. Bought those pills from Tung Se Mao and Kagayan Sulu. Nostrand was crew on my catch, and on the way back to Shanghai, he threw me overboard so he could have the pearls himself. Well, didn't you drown, Mr. Ivan T. Sanderson. Oh. Some Jap fisherman picked me up. Good. This is the first of the 12 rose-colored pearls I've gotten back, and I mean to get the other 11. Even if it takes a few dead bodies to accomplish it. Well, I admire your spirit, sir, but I'm afraid you've picked out a tough career. Where's Nostrand? I don't know. You must know you're working for him. But he said he'd contact me. Honesty. How did you get tied up with him? A girl named Kelly Green hired me to find her. Call her. All right. And ask her where Nostrand is. All right, I will. And don't point me. Not for life. <clears throat> yeah, well, 
Embassy Hotel. Oh, 627, please. Whom are you calling, please? Miss Kelly Green. Hello? Kelly? Yeah? Sam Stay. Yeah? Uh, did Captain Nasson get in touch with you? No. Did you find him, Sam? I did. Well, he hasn't come up here yet. Not yet, Sam. Thanks for calling. Goodbye. She hasn't seen him yet. Thank you, Mr. Spade. I'll be checking with you from time to time. He pocketed his gun and stalked out with a $5,000 pearl in his hand. I knew he had heard the operator say Embassy Hotel, and I knew he heard Kelly Green's room number. So I let him get a small head start. He went directly to the Embassy Hotel. I followed him into the lobby. He got the one elevator, and I had to wait until it went up and came down before I got it. When I arrived at the sixth floor, the door of 627 was slightly open, and there was a sharp odor in the air. Ivan T. Sanderson wasn't there. Neither was Kelly Green. And dragging himself across the floor, trying to reach the door, was Captain Eric Nasson. He had two bullet holes in his back. I tried to help him, but he was beyond him. He collapsed, dead. As his body relaxed, his mouth slowly opened, and five rose-colored pearls rolled out. You are listening to the weekly adventure of radio's most famous detective, Sam Spade. chimes mean good times on NBC. There's music and mystery with the chimes every Saturday. Tomorrow evening for mystery, Herbert Marshall stars as the man called X. In all the strange and far-off corners of the world, wherever there is intrigue, danger, and romance, there you will find the man called X. For music, there's your hit parade with the top tunes in the land as selected by you and brought to you by Snooky Lanson, Eileen Wilson, and the hit paraders. Last week, Tennessee Waltz and My Heart Cries for You were the top tunes across the country. Will they topple? Well, you'll have the answer tomorrow on Your Hit Parade. And now back to the string of death caper. Tonight's adventure with Sam Spade. After I found Narson's body, I called you, Lieutenant Kelsey, and told you as little as I could. After that, I went out to dinner and then home to bed. This hiatus was necessary in order to let the pot of vicious intrigue bubble a little. Well, the next morning, at considerable expense, we added a new character to our play, which was already an extravaganza. Good morning. Well, good morning. I am not sure, monsieur, when I am going to see you, uh, let you leave a very effective entrance, sir. And uh, who are you? Uh, Jacques Malraux. Aha! Of the Malraux curse. The same, monsieur. Mm. It was reported in the paper that you found the body of Captain Eric Nostrand in the apartment of a girl named Kelly Green. Well, I'm afraid I just happened to be there. Uh, did you happen to know if anyone found a number of pearls on Nostrand's body? Well, as far as I know, they didn't. You mean the Tawatawi pearls, don't you? Aha! You heard about that? A little, yeah. They belong to a man named Tung Se Mao, who sold them to a man named Ivan Sanderson, who had them stolen from him by Captain Nostran, who had half of his stolen from him. That's the installment I just read. Anyway. Well, perhaps it is mostly right, except for one important point. Tung Se Mao was holding them for me. They were not brought. They were taken from him at the point of a gun. Getting involved. Getting involved. I risked my life in the shark infested waters of territory diving for those pearls. No man but me will possess them. Mm. Now, where to find Kelly Green and Ivan Sanderson? Oh, I don't know. The police don't know, so I can't tell you. Uh-huh. All right, Mr. Spade. You have an honest face, I believe you. Oh. But if it turns out later that you have deceived me, you will find to your regret that Jacques Malraux is not an easy man to do business with. Au revoir. Following his exit, I allowed a pause for dramatic effect and then dissolved into the next scene. On the front door of Chanley's grocery store, there was a sign, closed for the day, so I went around the block, through an alley, and came up on his living quarters from the back way. I stood at the back door and knew somebody was home listening to some oriental Artie Shaw. I tried the doorknob, it turned, and I carefully opened the door and stepped in. <laughs> what you do my house? Well, what, what like you come and tie the house? Uh, turn that thing off and I'll tell you. 
All right. Get out. Get out or I call police. Sam, I didn't come here to quibble with you. I came to speak right from the shoulder. What are you talking about? The Palatawi Pearl. I don't know Pearl. Get out. You know Nasson was killed yesterday, don't you? I tell you before, I know no man named Nasson. All right, where's Sanderson? What man? A tall man with a clipped mustache who was in your store yesterday when I was there. There are plenty of people come my store. I don't know them all by name. Come to anybody. Plenty mustache. All right, all right. Play it your way, but Yeah. Now. But if you ever do meet up with Sanderson, just tell him that I have the other five pearls. The ones Nasson was killed for. Just as I closed the door behind me, I saw a pair of red alligator shoes with a pair of nylons draped over them pushed under a chair. I hesitated a minute, thought better, and hurried away. I went back to my office, pulled out a good book, and read for three hours. It paid off. Sam, Sam, I had to come to you. I'm in an awful jam. I should say you are. It won't get you any easier when I call the police. I knew where Eric was found in my apartment, but I didn't have anything to do with it. Nuts. I called you from here not ten minutes before Nostrum was found dead. All right, all right. He was there, but he wanted me to say he wasn't. Do you want me to tell you something else about yourself? I checked with the embassy hotel. Your bill was paid for a month in advance. You weren't stranded. It was what? a murder set up from beginning to end. But I can't understand your being dumb enough to use your real name. He wasn't supposed to have been killed there. It was supposed to happen someplace else. That's what I thought. Oh, don't do it, Sam. I came here to tell you the truth. I need your help. I can't help you now, Kelly. He made me do it. He made me come to San Francisco, wait for Nostrum, and then find him. Who made you? Sanderson? No. Chan. Chan Lee. He killed Nostrum. He shot him. But we heard somebody at the door and went out the fire escape before we could search Nostrum. What do you mean he made you do it? Look at this. That arm isn't pretty, is it? There must be a thousand holes in it. When did you start this? In Singapore. Chan used to be there and he supplied me. I had to follow him here because I didn't have enough money to buy it. I see. Well, Kelly, I'm sorry. Maybe the state will take that into consideration. Sam, I want to go into partnership with you. Partnership? Doing what? Selling pearls. You have five of them. I have six of them. Here. Where'd you get these? From Chan. I heard you there. After you left, he got excited and had to take something to quiet himself down. I grabbed these and beat it while he was still under. What do you say, Sam? Let's sell him and go someplace. Well, it might be arranged. Where's Sanderson? Ivan Sanderson? Yeah. He lives on a boat. It's a yawl, a trader anchored at Pier 32. I don't worry about him, Sam. You can take care of him. I probably can. Did you ever hear of a guy named Jacques Marot? Marot? Jacques Marot? Yeah. Was he in San Francisco? He was in here yesterday looking for you and Sanderson. Sam, the deal's off. I don't want to have anything to do with it. Here, keep the pearls. I picked up the six pearls and put them in my office safe for the other five I'd taken from Nostra. Then I went down to the waterfront looking for Sanderson. Chan Lee was still under drugs. There'd be no problem for the police to pick up. Nor would Kelly Green once her drug supply began to give out. The trader was a trim, white yawl tied up at Pier 32 with a Jacob ladder running down to its deck. I climbed down and, looking around, found Sanderson in a cabin sitting behind the table. It wasn't a commonplace thing. You see, he'd just been shot. You can't do anything for me, Sam. There's nothing to do. How did it happen, Sam? The Malro curse. Jacques Malro. Yes. Yeah. He made a vow that he was going to kill anyone who... Touch the pearl. Anyone. Did he get your pearl? Yes. <laughs> Who has the rest? I do, eleven of them. When tomorrow finds out, I wonder how you're going to feel dying eleven times. <laughs> That's when I turned the whole thing over to you, Kelsey. I went back to my office, put in a call to your office, and gave you a complete rundown on the case from beginning to end. Who did what and how you might go about finding them. You said you'd be right over to pick up the pearls, but you got there a little late. I had no sooner put down the phone when... All right, you have a pearl. Give them to Chubb, or he will not hesitate to shoot you. The way you did, Nostrum? I don't have time for talk. Hurry, get pearls. Okay. They're uh, in my safe here. Huh. I don't think I'm going to give you any arguments or pull anything clever. It would be too bad if you did. I don't really know who these pearls do belong to, and I don't care much anymore. You can have the worries instead of me. I would be glad to worry about such a pleasure. There you are. Here you are. 
Throw it in, Susie. Catch. Thank you. Now I will go. I advise you against raising outcry. I'm glad to get rid of you. Go and have a long and happy life. Oh? Oh, I have been hand-kissed by the God. He was, but for a different reason. He put the pearls in his pocket, and with a little smile of triumph at how easy it had been, he turned and quickly walked out of the office. He even closed the door politely. But outside, he didn't get far. I ran for the hall, starting my 38 out of the poster. Chan Lee lay still on the floor, and his coat pocket had been turned inside out. Steps were pounding down the stairwell, and I followed. When I hit the sidewalk, he was half a block away and running. I fired at him, and he stopped and fired back. My second one caught him in the chest, and he fell twisting across the sidewalk. I walked right up to him, but it was all over. Jacques Marot was dead. And one by one, 12 of the most beautiful rose-colored pearls in the world were dropping out of his hand, rolling down the gutter and plopping into the sewer where they belong. <laughs> Period and the string. Dad, hmm? did they all go down the sewer? Every pearl, Effie. Who knows where they might be now? Maybe at the filtering plant. Maybe out to sea. Sam, hmm? could I get off early tonight? Effie, put that thought out of your mind. They're not worth it. Oh, but Sam, all that work. I said forget it. I'll go type that up. Oh. Go on, scooch. Scooch. <laughs> Three chimes mean good times on NBC. There's music and fun in the air tomorrow evening, styled to suit your Saturday night of merriment. Dennis Day brings you songs and comedy in his charming boyish manner, and then Judy Canova gets together with her frolicsome friends for Mountain Melody and Mayhem, followed by Grand Ole Opry with singing MC Red Foley and his gang. It's a Saturday night of fun designed for you. <laughs> Just to wear them one night. Anything? Well, I suppose it isn't worth it. But someday, somehow, I want to wear it. Thank you, Jane. Effie, I'd rather see you with a sparkling light in your eye any day. Looks much better on you. And of course, it's cheaper. Effie, is that a slur on my character? Oh, I don't get paid too much. But too often. All right, let's settle this thing right here. You say you want some pearls? Oh, I'd love some. Uh-huh. Here you are. Six oysters. <gasps> three boys and three girls. You can grow your own at home. Are those really oysters? They are, indeed. I picked them up at Fisherman's Wharf just this afternoon. <laughs> what do I do? Well, I'll make it easier for you. I also bought a bottle of cocktail sauce. So which will it be, pearls or oysters on the half shell? Oh, Sam. <laughs> You're so, so different. <laughs> Let's eat them. Not until you say... Good night. <laughs> good night, good night. Adventures of Sam Spade are produced, edited, and directed by William Spear. Sam Spade was played by Stephen Dunn. Lorreen Tuttle is Effie. Script for tonight's adventure by John Michael Hayes. Musical scoring by Lud Gluskin, conducted by Robert Armbruster. Next week, same time for another adventure with Sam Spade. Now the Magnificent Montague, then it's Duffy Savern on NBC.